Hello, my name is Will Strength, and I want to thank you all for coming here today. I want to start off by telling you all a story. A story about a boy with a broken life and an uncertain future. His childhood was rife with neglect, drug and gambling addictions, outlaw motorcycle clubs, violence and fear. Fear of getting hit, fear of the police coming to take his father to jail again. Fear of an empty stomach because there was little to no food in the house. No running water. Fear of being constantly bullied because the ragged state of his unwashed clothes and his unwashed body. Fear so strong that education held little to no importance in his life. Survival, that was everything. By the time he hit his early teens, these fears had developed into the constant ebb and flow of his entire existence. Until culminating with the removal from his father's house into a group home until that replacement could be decided. He was then sent to Idaho. Great state of Idaho, it's beautiful, isn't it? To live with his mother more shortly after because of the events of his life and how he'd been socialized in the, in the realm of violence and motorcycle gangs. He was kicked out of his home, dropped out of school. He was angry, he had major behavioral issues. His path, he remained broken throughout the early parts of his adult years, leading to multiple run-ins with, with law enforcement and multiple arrests. And it's about the time this boy meets an angel. Right? She married him in August of 2000. But he has no clue how to be a husband. She gives him a, a daughter in 2002. He doesn't know how to hold down a job. He's a high school dropout with little to no job skills. He does not understand what the word father is a few years and one more daughter later his wife and she's at her point <sighs> she's not one to call it quits but i'm sure how she can continue in this endless loop of constant incarceration lack of financial stability and with him fresh from jail and yet another uh, stand of unemployment, she picks up a newspaper and starts browsing the classifieds for a job for him. <coughs> I'll never forget that day. So my beautiful wife, Heather, she found a little, small, small little clipping that said, Head Start, now accepting it with applications for three and four year olds. She told me she was enrolling my daughter into Head Start. I didn't know what Head Start was, but I said no anyways. We were not gonna be on another welfare program. We were already on food stamps and housing, ICCP and Medicaid, everything. I said no, I'm already being judged way too much. I'm not doing this. Well, she didn't listen. <laughs> She's a smart lady. She doesn't listen. But I soon find out, like so many others have, that Head Start is not some government assistance program. But I'll come back to that, okay? So after a few months into my daughter's Head Start career, my wife finally pushed me to attend a, a parent night, where the parents come together and they learn about the, the, what's going on in the child's education and different programs that are available and 
get to know the teachers, and really get involved and become advocates for their child. Well, at this parent night, I was voluntold. And anybody in Head Start knows that voluntold is just the way of life. Don't give them a chance, just push them into it and watch them fly. It's great. So I was told by my wife and my daughter's teacher to attend this male involvement activity later that week. They lured me there under the pretense of pizza. I just want that to be known. <laughs> I did get my pizza. Just, I, I did get it. There was no false pretense. I just wanted to point that out. First night there, we decided we're going to rename the group. Male involvement, it just sounded too much like just not our style, hand holding, kumbaya, that kind of stuff. So we renamed it Super Dads. That's what we wanted to be. We bonded, man. We were brothers. We created our own new motto changing the mold. Because that's what we were going to do. We were going to change the mold of what it meant to be a father. All our conversations and our activities that night, they molded our actions from there on out. We learned how to spend quality time with our children. <laughs> because of these Super Dads events, they were focused around father and child develop, uh, relationship development. From Super Dad car races, we take like medium sized boxes, we trick them out, they do you know, real sweet with, you know, Superchargers on them. They didn't run, but uh, we push them or pull them down the hallway, and have good times. And the box would rip, and the kids still wanted to ride on. Uh, just you know, super dad bowling nights where we get together and teach our children how to bowl. At one point, we even built an entire putt putt golf course uh, in the upstairs and downstairs of the Lincoln Early Childhood Center. It's great. Got pictures of that. It, it was a fun time. Um, but the coolest thing I realized is that during this time, it's like a year or two of time, I hadn't been to jail. Jail, uh, the, 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 that part of my life was over. I was way too busy to be incarcerated for stupid stuff. I was learning leadership skills which led me to land a decent job, the confidence to hold tight to that job. And the Head Start, that was my family's turning point. My wife volunteered so many hours in our child's classroom that it led her to pursue a career in education. In 2007, she started at ISU for her BA in Early Childhood Education and Special Education. And once again, voluntold, um, her and our family advocate pushed me to earn my GED, um, which I had kind of tried and very much failed over 13 years to, to achieve. And they, they got me in touch with the people I needed to be in touch with to from the Adult Success Center to TRIO. And two weeks later, after deciding to go to college, I earned my GED and was enrolled for the 2008 spring semester at ISU. I was nominated at the state level, not only the state level, uh, by Pocatello Chubbuck Head Start for beating the odds award. I was chosen as a winner here, but also at the Region 10 and the national level that year. Oh. Our daughters were excelling in school because of the head start that they had received. They were reading at a sixth grade level in the second and third grades. Christina, my oldest daughter, is planning to enroll in Salt Lake Community College in the fall of 2020 for design. And my daughter, Cheyenne, who's 14 now, 
class to attend Stanford to earn her law degree, and she'll start there in 2023. And it makes me so proud, and I just reflect that every bit back to Head Start. The next several years resulted in many sleepless nights due to studying for tests and writing papers, struggling to balance work, school, and being a good parent. But Head Start was still there for us. Our children had already left the program, but they were still there for us. Our advocate would still, and still to this day, checks up on us or encourages us to come to our office whenever perils are just too much to bear on our own. If, if I go a month without talking to Gloria, she uh, gives me a call. Hey, what's going on? Are you okay? Is everything good? Everything's good. Thanks, Mom. <laughs> they became my family. I didn't have a good mom, but I have one now. I actually have two because of Head Start. As the financial news, though, started to uh, tighten, as it does whenever two parents are in school, we were starting to run low on our financial aid money. I decided I'd withdraw from college because my wife was nearing her, her degree, and we needed to focus on that. Uh, in 2014, she earned her BA in early childhood education and special education. I had a pretty good job that I was working to turn into a career I was pretty happy with. And she started working at Pocatello Chubbuck Head Start, which gave us our start and it seemed like the right place to land. It didn't take long before we were self-sufficient family unit. No longer on food stamps. Said goodbye to housing and ICCP. We became everything that those programs are put in place to accomplish because of our Head Start. During and after both my daughter's Head Start careers, I became increasingly more involved in advocacy for Head Start. I joined the Policy Council, which is a board made up of Head Start parents and community members who make decisions and govern on the behalf of Head Start program. This was my introduction to the political process. I got an opportunity to come here to Boise and walk, walk the hallowed halls right behind us, meet with legislators and the governor, and fell in love, y'all. And that's how I figured out what exactly I wanted to do with my future. I want to run for public office, be a public servant, advocate for those who cannot speak for themselves. So this year I re-enrolled in ISU for a BA in social work and political science. But you know life is funny. Just, just whenever you make plans, life laughs at you and throws you a curveball. In May of 2016, we received a phone call that my nephew had not been picked up from the hospital. It was the state on the other line saying that he was born with premature, he was born premature with drugs in his system. He spent four months in the NICU. They asked us if we were asked to. We couldn't say no. Just three months later, we go to court for one of the placement hearings. Because that's what fostering is, it's a whole lot of court hearings. And you're there and you're supporting that child because you're his voice, you're his advocate or her advocate. And suddenly we find ourselves going home with an 18 month year old, or 18 month old, his older brother. This poor boy came to us. He hadn't been bathed in a week or two. He had zero communication skills, zero nonverbal. He could scream. Most of his life he had existed in a box, basically, a, a playpen, you know, smaller than a jail cell. Unable to walk, unable to feed himself, I felt like I was looking at myself. 
and my heart broke. But after many court hearings, the state decided to terminate parental rights. And we began that process of permanency. We adopted both of them in October of 2017. They are both thriving, running, jumping, playing and talking. A little too much sometimes. <laughs> 15 years ago, we would have never received that call. But because of Head Start and their influence in our family's lives, our sons and our daughters have a life of value and love. As I look at every blessing, every positive life choice, every smile in my life, I realize it all stems back to that day with a two by two inch newspaper clipping inviting our family to enroll and head start. Before I leave you, I want to say one more thing. One last thing. The greatest part about Head Start is that whether you volunteer for one hour, one day, one year, or it becomes your career, it never leaves you. And you will always be a part of the Head Start family. Thank you.